This is Friday Night Football with Ben Bobick, Samantha Cassano, and Greg Glover. Friday Night Football is brought to you by Food City. Nobody does food like Food City. And Sonic. Mmm, Sonic. And now, Friday Night Football. It's Friday night. And you know what that means. Time for the most must-see high school football show in the Tennessee Valley. Friday night football on Local 3. So it appears some schools were on fall break this week. In fact, a lot of schools. But us here, we don't take breaks. When we're this deep in the season, the only direction we know is forward. So let's get into it, shall we? We would begin with our game of the week, but it just finished up a little bit later, so we're going to get to that in just a few. One thing we love about this program, though, about as much as anything, really, is fun non-region games. Like the one tonight at Jewel Field in Decatur, you have the Meigs County Tigers well on their way to another region title hosting Polk County and a Wildcats team that's been giving plenty of squads fits this season. Tigers in Jewel Field, tough to beat. On the doorstep, Bryson Hefner scores tutties like this in his sleep. Tigers on top early. Polk County, hey, you know what? They're fighting hard on the road at the goal line themselves and Jesse Holden finds pay dirt. Wildcats on the board. But like we said, Tigers, in Jewel Field, tough to beat. Hefner scores again. Meigs County, they're rolling at the right time. They're six and two, and they take down Polk County 42 to seven at home. Now to the Taj Heritage hosting Lafette. The Generals have won two of their last three, and they look the part tonight. Three phase of football, baby. Lafette punt appears to be blocked by a combo of Tristan Simmons and Killian Smith. It's scooped up by Cooper Chapelier, and he houses it. Heritage getting it done on special teams. Then Olivia Rod Stinko sings that Deja Vu song. Here's the Heritage version. It's Simmons again, another blocked punt. It bounces right into the arms of Cody Bryan, and you already know he's scoring. A pair of blocked punts with consecutive Lafette drives, spare Heritage TDs, hitting the sprinkler celly too. The Generals also scored on offense, by the way. Caden Height to Noah Pierce. Heritage makes this look easy. They dominate Lafette for a 50 to seven region win. Cleveland up in Maryville trying to take down the mighty Red Rebels who have seemingly returned to form this fall. Listen, when the home team is going to give you a gift, you gotta hop on it. Tyson Lorenzo does, and that's Blue Raiders football. It wouldn't lead to anything though. Maryville lining up the punt, but man, this is just perfectly executed. Had everyone fooled as Price Davis runs for the Rebels first down. And this is how you take advantage. Will Jones in the play action, roll out right on the money to Hudson Jamerson as Maryville extends their first half lead to 21 to seven to make matters worse. Cleveland just fell out of sync. Case McGowan looking for the big play. He just overthrows it right in the arms of Bryson Barrett, making three straight L's in a, three straight L's for Cleveland. They fall 37 to 15 to Maryville on the road in region action. Let's get to the scoreboard for the first time tonight. CCS gets a big road win over Lakeway Christian. Copper Basin gets a region win at home. We couldn't find that Grace Baptist Franklin Christian School for some reason. They're hiding it from us. So we'll hopefully get that updated for you online. What a game up in Grundy County. Watertown wins by one. McCauley takes care of business on the road. Winners 41 to eight. McMinn Central gets a nice road non-region win. 41 to 17 over Kingston. And one more. We actually didn't know this game was happening, but we were able to sneak it in on the scoreboard. The Walker Valley rolls into their bye week. Winners 49 to eight over Pure Academy. Here's your pick for the Friday Night Football Play of the Week. Brought to you by Center for Sports Medicine and Orthopedics. We keep players in the game. We can't remember the last time this has happened, if ever. But Tyner's Dion Edwards takes home his second straight Play of the Week honor. The freshman phenom with another sensational catch, this time on defense, as he picks off the McMinn Central pass. This would prove vital in the Rams region win over the Chargers. Get a load of it again. Look at him. Out jumps everybody. That's prime time Dion Edwards, son. He's a stud. Now, let's take a look at this. Last week he was on offense for it. So now I wanted to freeze frame this part right here. Look where he's heading. He's heading in that direction, right? Well, that would be out of his own end zone, so that wouldn't be a good idea. His shirt is being grabbed by the defender, and he kind of goes, gets looped all the way around and goes like this, and goes like this, 
and gets it out past the 20 because you think if you if, if he intercepts this, catches the end zone, just take the knee, you get it at the 20. He's just such a playmaker. He wants the ball in his hands at all times. He was taking about taking this back 106 yards. He's able to get it past the 20, out jumps everybody, gets away from everybody, makes the interception, makes a big time play. Did we mention he's a freshman? Prime time Deion Edwards. And you know what stinks is Tyner was off this week, so he doesn't even have a chance at a three-peat for the play of the week, so we'll have to check back with him next week. We'll check back with you after the break. Plenty more Friday Night Football coming your way. Cheer on with the Friday Night Football Cheerleaders of the Week, sponsored by FMO Furniture, Chattanooga's newest family-owned furniture store. This ain't nothing but a THS party! Let me hear you say hey! Hey! Let me hear you say yo! Yo! We said it before, we'll say it again. We love fun non-region games. So let's roll to Bear Stadium, shall we? Bradley Central hasn't been having the best season especially when you consider last fall. Red Bank finds themselves in some must-win situations in their region. Tonight, they both look to get better against one another. Lions looking crispy with the all-whites. Ball on the doorstep, no need to overthink it. Josiah Featherstone, light like a feather, hard as a stone. He barrels in with the Red Bank TD. Bears looking to move in now. They're on the ground. But look as, as the, the runner extends for the first. Featherstone just rips it from his arms. An extra effort play from Bradley gone wrong as Featherstone is going the other way with it. What a play from 21. He took the Lions up in Bears territory, but they'd only get three out of it, but that's fine. Joey Thompson knocks it through. Red Bank gets a really good non-region road win over Bradley Central, 17 to 10. Senior night at the Baylor School. Red Raiders hosting St. Pius X from Missouri, and Briggs Cherry was electric tonight. Dropping one in a bucket to Joaquin Dodson, who makes the easy TD grab, and Big Red's just getting started. Already made the throw once, made it easier the second time. Cherry to Caden Dewey this time, and the young fans were loving it. They got streamers out. They're moving it all around. There's no school tomorrow, by my calculation. Get wild, man. Now for the <clears throat> cherry on top. 
Bricks Cherry was in his bag tonight, running all over the place, then just unloads on a throw across his body, right in the arms of Dewey, who goes 62 -y yards to the house. St. Pius X came all the way from Missouri just to get clapped. Baylor stays unbeaten with a 48-7 win on senior night. Now we go to Tunnel Hill here where the Bruins just showing out doing splits. We got Creed playing in the background. Northwest hosting at Ayersville. Big game for both. This one, all Bruins in the first half. Up 14 to zip. Make it 17 to zip. Courtesy of this Neary Martinez who splits the pipes with the field goal. But Ayersville wakes up though. They drive right down the field. Beautiful ball from former Dalton QB Ethan Long to Trey Winters. Tigers are alive. They recover a pooched kick. Then take full advantage. This time it's Winters. He's throwing it to Long. A little razzle dazzle from a Ayersville. And that's 70 to nothing. Northwest lead. Now just 17 to 14 in the blink of an eye. Bruins defense settling things down late in the half. Sam Crossham just bullies his way through the line. He sacks long. That ball is out. Dominic Johnson all over it. After a shaky end in the first half, Northwest regains their composure and finishes this one out for a 38 to 14 win over Adairsville. A win that could do wonders for them come playoff time. Let's go back to the scoreboard, shall we? Calhoun gets a region win over Gilmer on the road. Union County beats Cahulla Creek. Dade County gets a big win on the road over Coosa. Gotta love to see that for the Wolverines. Here we go, Dalton loses on the road at Cass. LFO down at Rockmart. North Murray loses on the road at North Cobb Christian. We got one more scoreboard this go around. Ringgold, big, big, big win for the Tigers on the road over Sonoraville in region play. Woodland beats Southeast Whitfield. Fort Payne takes down Hazel Green. It's time to catch all the fun on the Friday Night Football Fan Cam. You hear us say it, now we get to show you. There are a few experiences that rival a Friday night at Bean Stadium in South Pittsburgh. Check it out in this week's Fan Cam. Alex Phillips, the kick. It's time for the Friday Night Football Band of the Week with Greg Glover, sponsored by Armor Exteriors, your locally owned, not locally franchised, exterior remodeling experts. I'm with the drum majors from the original high school band. Your name? Roger Collins. And you? Evangeline Williams. Oh, they look great. How do you like being in front of the group? I love it. So yeah. much fun. How about you? It's amazing. The energy is great. We're going to put a few songs together because they play a lot during the play of the game here, and you're going to love the rhythm of the ridges from Ridgeland High School, your Band, band of, of the, the Week. week. It's time for the Friday Night Football Game of the Week, sponsored by Warren and Griffin, your local five-star law firm, supporting high school football for decades. We don't just put up billboards, we put down roots. We said it on Tuesday, and we'll say it again tonight, even though it was slim pickings in terms of the amount of games being played, we still think this game would have 
stood out anyway. South Pittsburgh hosting Chattanooga Prep, the perennial power that is South Pitt, the new program out to prove something in chat prep. And any Friday night spent at Bean Stadium is a good one. That's where we find Samantha Cassano, who joins us live from South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. It was a make or break game for both. How did it all shake out, Samantha? Yeah, we Senior night for South Pittsburgh as the Pirates welcome in Chattanooga Prep. South Pitt gets right to work scoring on their opening drive. Pirates lead 7-0. Same score midway through the second day on Cooper avoids any tackles. Now it's a foot race. Number two wins it as South Pittsburgh goes up 14 zip. Chattanooga Prep is able to get on the board right before the half. Austin Jones airs a pass out to Datari Jones. 38 yards and the Sentinels head into the locker room down 14 to six. But they come out firing in the third quarter. Jones rolls out, hits Lundy on Kellogg who has an easy path to pay dirt. It's a one point ball game. The Pirates immediately fumble the ball and it's recovered by Chat Prep. That sets the stage for this Marquise Gardner run from down eight to up five in the matter of minutes. So now South Pittsburgh is playing from behind for the first time. Dayon Cooper powers his way in for six. qb one second touchdown of the night makes it 21-19 Pirates. They add two more scores. South Pittsburgh with 21 unanswered points. They win it 35-19. Our chances getting higher and higher every time. People down us, they keep telling us, they say we suck. We're not the same team last year, but we got a chance now. Pittsburgh moves to 3-0 in region play. Let's recap this. Four returning starters, four seniors, same old South Pittsburgh Pirates. They now finish up the regular season on the road at Sail Creek next week and then at Wibble the following week. For now, live at Bean Stadium in South Pittsburgh. Smith is that Pierce are still partying in South Pitt, as they should be, right? Now it's tough to top the 2023 season the Tryon Bulldogs had, one that's going to be talked about for years. But you know what? Shout out to the 2024 Dogs. They followed it up by going 7-1 into their game tonight. And if they made it to 8-1, they could be setting themselves up nicely with the playoffs around the corner. And you know what? We always show them breaking the sign. Let's show the sign. Great job to those who made it. Bulldogs hosting Greenville. Easy money early in this one. The give to Ethan Willingham, and he rolls into the end zone in a people sweet celebration. These kids these days, they're so creative. Bulldogs on the doorstep again. This time it's the Lane Train. Lane Harris, who barrels in for the score, trying, having their way with the Patriots in this one. On senior night, we have to tip the cap to the signal caller. Kate Smith, the unquestioned leader of this team, having a great season. Beautiful ball to Willingham on the doorstep, and it's Smith on the quick hitter to Logan Stokes. Bulldogs get it done, 43-12. They're 8-1 with their regular season finale. All that remains in two weeks. How about a little trip to North Sand Mountain? Big 2A Region 7 game at home for the Bison against Pleasant Valley. The Raiders came out hot. No one home on the back end for this Jaden Sparks to Hunter Sparks City. I wonder if their sister is Jordan. Well, plenty of air on that throw, though. Pleasant Valley with a long TD. North Sand trying to respond, but they just could not get anything going. Raiders swarming all over the Bison offense. More Sparks fly from the Pleasant Valley offense. Sparks to Sparks again. No reason to fix what ain't broke. We need these guys in our demographic. I'd have a field day with these two highlights. Pleasant Valley, well, they come to North Sand Mountain, take down the Bison for a 26 to 20 win. Tough stretch for NSM here. They're going to get Bizga on the road next week too. So they're fighting for a little playoff position, and that's not a, that's not too good of a loss for the for the Bison at home. How about one more time to the scoreboard, shall we? North Jackson on the road over Westminster Christian. We just mentioned Bizga. The Eagles are undefeated. They have state title aspirations. You know what? Who's going to stop them? Because no one has yet. They get another big win on the road. What a game in Scottsboro. Winners by three, the Wildcats are over ARAB. I think we got one more. Hey, you know what? I want to shout out these North Carolina schools, too. They're going through a lot, and they're still able to play high school football, and it's a great escape for a lot of people that are going through a lot. So this is great that they're still getting in some football here. Robbinsville over Andrews, 28-7. Cherokee over Hayesville, 22-zip. 
And we got the Murphy Bulldogs over Swain County at home. So it's good to see them back in the wind column. And again, shout out to those folks there in North Carolina and all the Carolinas. Only we can make a light week fun. This Friday night football stuff never disappoints. And with break time over next week, well, it's crunch time. Playoff pushes are beginning. Region titles within grasp. Home playoff games also becoming reality for some. It's the best time of the year. We're pumped to be along for the ride. Thanks for joining us tonight. Watch yourself, boys and girls, and we hope you have a lovely, lovely weekend. Friday Night Football is brought to you by Food City and Sonic Drive-Ins. We thank our local Food City for subs to feed our Friday Night Football crew. Get your sandwich party planner at your local Food City deli.